Hey, what's going on guys? I, uh, I have a backsplash now, and I didn't before, so let's talk about it. So obviously I'm stupid, and I still don't know how to make videos well, because I didn't record anything before I actually started the job. I recorded a little bit throughout, but I didn't show my kitchen before the backsplash was here, so you'll just have to imagine the tile not being here, because I, 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 I didn't do anything I can't show you. Now I did do something unique on this project that I want to highlight, and that would be this uh, roll of blue stuff right here. Now it's not actually blue, this is just a the plastic sheet like covering over the adhes adhesive, because this is just a, a roll of essentially adhesive foam tape that uh, the tile that sticks onto the wall and then the tile just gets stuck onto that. And then once you're all done with the tile, you grout it just like normal. So. Before we really get into that, how about some footage of me just, uh, you know, putting that stuff on the wall? So I don't know the longevity of a product like this because this particular one I've never seen used. This was from my local Menards. Uh, Lowe's and Home Depot both have other brands as well. The brand from Home Depot, which is escaping me at the moment, I've seen one example of somebody saying they did it, uh, they've had it for 10 years and it's still holding up great. So hopefully I'll have uh, as, much success, as much success with this one as they have with the Home Depot brand, whatever that one is, I can't remember, but that one's been around since like 2009, I think. But so far, so good. As you saw, I sanded my wall ahead of time. Uh, I don't, I didn't have heavy texture at all, I just had orange peel, but I still wanted to make sure I had a good, as smooth a surface as I could get. I didn't take it down to just totally flat, but I tried to take off the biggest uh, bumps in the orange peel. Also, as well as just roughing it up to help with the adhesion. If you're gonna do that, I would highly suggest having a sander that you can hook up to a vacuum to do dust extraction because otherwise it would be a mess and you better be wearing a mask because it will be terrible. But using my vacuum connected to my orbital sander, I had virtually no dust and it was really, it worked out really well. So yeah, the stuff goes on, it's very sticky. This has no backing on the uh, backside once you peel it, so you gotta be real careful not to stick it on much or else you could lose the tackiness that's actually sticking it to the wall, at least some of it, and could potentially have issues later on down the road. So you gotta be careful that you're not sticking it on stuff ahead of time. And you gotta be careful with once it's up, you just leave the blue uh, cover on until you're ready to put stuff, put, until you're ready to put tile on and make sure the tile is good and dry. So obviously I had a wet saw, and using the wet saw, you saw I uh, had to dry them off and use a hair dryer to make sure they were good and dry before I ever put them on. But so far, everything worked out great. The grout, now, well, if you're like me, so this is a, a big reason I wanted to opt for this product over using regular Thinset, is this took me about a week to finally get all this stuff up just because of time. And if I had to, every single time, mix up thin set to do all this every time, this would have taken me so much longer and made just a huge mess. But this way, I was able to put this stuff up and it can sit as long as it needs to until I'm ready to put stuff up. And then as soon as I'm ready to pull, put stuff up, I pull whatever blue uh, backing off that I need and I put the tile on. No mess, no fuss, and I can take the time as I have it, which made it a lot easier than using regular thin set. So this worked really well for me. If you're in a similar situation, it might work just as well for you. So think about that for your next future project.
All right, so the tile is all done, and I kind of wanted to touch on some things that I may have skipped over because I didn't actually shoot most of the stuff. I mean, you saw me putting up the tile and stuff over at the beginning, and really the rest was pretty much the same, so I didn't really see a need to show most of it. Uh, there's just a couple things I wanted to touch on that I didn't really get to. Uh, one being this trim, uh, this aluminum trim here that I used uh, right here as well as both of my edges right there and up top over there. So I don't think I, I showed how to install this. What I do with this is honestly, you just stick it to, uh, I have, I made a line here going from the bottom edge of the cabinet and I stuck that right onto the uh, adhesive backing just like the tile. And then uh, over top, I just cut some thin strips to put it back over the top so that the tile still had something to stick to even when it was up there. And then uh, that worked great and just grouted and everything was uh, fine, just like normal uh, tiling. In terms of grouting, I kind of went with the same idea. I just wanted to do as little work as possible. So I just got the ready mixed grout here. Uh, it's obviously more expensive than the stuff you have to mix up, but there's no thinking. You literally just open the tub and start spreading it on there. Makes it a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot less fuss, a lot less tool cleaning in the end. So, like I said, it's more expensive. Same with this, this is more expensive than thin set, but it's just, it, it makes the job easier and more approachable, maybe is a good word, from uh, the work standpoint, or maybe just time and what you're able to do. And whereas if you know you have to do all this, uh, this a lot more work, it might be harder to get yourself motivated, but if you know some of the stuff's gonna be easier, maybe it'll, uh, easier to get into it and get it done quicker, so. This is the stuff I use. It worked out really well so far. It's just been done, so hopefully none of this is gonna start falling off in the next few months or few years. One, another thing I don't think I touched on was the uh, outlets. Now this is more specific to my, or this type of tile that's on the mesh backing. So any kind of mosaic or whatever would have be on the mesh backing. Um, this would probably apply to that as well. This, well this black cover is just because I have these screwless covers so it snaps under there. But, uh, what makes this a little bit easier, I think, to do, because I only have a wet tile saw. I don't have any type of blades for cutting out like a section for here, like I wouldn't, like you might uh, for cutting out any other kind of tile. So with the mesh backing, what I'm able to do is just cut out these tiles that are actually within this uh, receptacle spot, and then I can mark off and cut them individually and then stick them on as individual pieces. I don't have to try and cut a square or rectangle out of the whole backing. I can just cut these out of the mesh, pull them out and individually cut them and stick them back on here. So that worked really well and uh, made it easier for me since I don't have any blades on a grinder or anything to actually cut out tile like this in this type of uh, mesh tile setup that I was using. So as I said, the tile's all done. My next thing, and hopefully it should be the last thing, yeah, for this job at least, is uh, as you can see, it's still quite ugly around my windows here. So now I'm gonna be pulling off this drywall in here uh, all, on all three sides here, and I'm gonna be replacing this with a window trim uh, inside as well as out. So let's go ahead and get started on a hopefully much nicer window trim than I had before. So I may have mentioned earlier in the video that uh, the project was done. Well, that's only mostly true. Uh, let's look at the window here. So if you have yourself a keen eye, you may notice that uh, I don't have any of this caulked here. And I 
want to. So I didn't have, I don't have anything around here caulked. And really, these aren't even nailed in. I was just going to be uh, like brad nailing in here into the framing on the sides here, so I don't have anything on the face. I did leave some space for uh, for nailing here that wouldn't be on the tile, but uh, just to save myself from having to cover anything in the face, I was just going to do it here on the inside because that's that's why I nailed uh, the face frames to the to the interior window framing inside here. But I haven't actually done that yet. These are just friction fit in here actually. And they've been doing just fine, which is kind of why I haven't really bothered with it for a while. I just kind of got it here and then I stopped. It'll get done. I'm not just some sort of hack. We've been busy, leave me alone. Oh, and just in case somebody asks, these are uh, European style tilt turn windows. So you flip it sideways like that and the whole window opens up just like that. Flip this all the way up and it just tilts in like that. So if you just want to open it up for like some ventilation, uh, you can just do that. And if it's raining, this will help still to give you some ventilation without uh, really letting any rain in. So we really like these windows and they're much better air sealed and uh, yeah, just better air sealed than uh, typical standard like double hung windows here in the US. And one other thing I didn't show in building is, uh, yeah, these connections here are just uh, three pocket hole screws on the back side here, uh, screwing the top as well as the, the bottoms to the, the side rails here. I didn't show that before, but yeah, that's what I did. I mean, you've seen, if you've watched stuff like this, you've probably seen pocket holes a thousand times. So I didn't really think I needed to show that, but yeah, that's what I did. Those are just pocket holes together. Don't worry about the pans drying and all the crap in the corner. This is an actual kitchen. I ain't staging crap for you. But anyway, the one other thing I wanted to show is uh, because we wanted to do this style with our the windowsill here sticking out past, uh, I didn't know the, the best method of doing this and I can't remember exactly why. Uh, it might have just been because I thought this was just the easier way to do it with, I built this whole, the whole frame is together and this, these are nailed together and this is connected to this rail here. So all this is together, but the sill is a separate piece and this one's loose enough that I can show you. Um, it just slides, I just slide it right out. And like I said, I, ha I will nail this stuff. I just haven't yet. So give me a break. Um, but these side rails end up just kind of sitting right on there. And I will, like it says, once when I finish all this stuff, I'll caulk this whole joint here and make that look a lot nicer. And this will all be connected and nice, uh, nicely connected together. But yeah, it's, it was real easy. I just cut this out or for around there. I had the same length as the whole width here and just slide it right in there and set it. It was good to go. Thought the whole thing was beautiful. So hopefully you guys got some from that video. Uh, I know I was a little lazy and I didn't record a whole lot, but hopefully you got enough information from what I did provide. Uh, I'd say give this stuff a try. It's over a month later actually now that I'm recording this. Uh, so it hasn't fallen down yet. That's something. But yeah, check it out. Like I said, this one, uh, this particular deco mat is from Menards. Uh, I know the other stores have their own brands or other versions of it. But especially if you struggle with time, like if you're getting off work and you only have a few hours every night to actually do something, this really helps in, I think, cutting down on some of that time and just work because you don't have to mix up a bucket of thin set. You don't have to then clean off your tools and stuff after the fact and clean out your bucket. It's just, there's a lot less mess. And I think it just allows you for more freedom in time in what you're able to do. Like I said before, you can put this stuff up and it can sit for days. Just leave the blue uh, cover on and you've got nothing to worry about. It's still sitting there, it's stuck on the wall. It's waiting for you whenever you get to it. And then once you can get to tiling, you just pull the blue stuff off as you go down the wall and you're fine. So if you struggle with enough time to do certain projects like this, this uh, I think could be really helpful for you. So if you guys like this video, please like, subscribe, hit all the buttons and uh, I'll see you next time. God bless guys.